Hey guys, it's Brandon. We're going to do a little bit of live kibitzing today here on the ICC. We have GM, <coughs> excuse me, GM Ohm, which is uh, Grandmaster American Grandmaster Yasser Sarawan, playing on the uh, three-minute auto pairing. He's going up against somebody named Talon with a 2060 rating, so a uh, severe underdog here. So Yasser playing black played the um, what was it? the uh, the Aliachin defense. Uh, to one e4, one e4, knight f6, provoking, uh, provoking white forward with e5 and letting white build the big center. And the idea is uh, that black will get the opportunity to attack that big center later on. So you can see white hasn't built himself a nice center. It's a space advantage. Uh, he's played some strange moves, like I don't know, maybe this is all theory. I don't know the, any, anything about the Alakin defense except you know some basic positional concepts, but. Um, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, I guess while I was busy doing introductions, some stuff happened that I sort of missed. But so uh, this bishop offering—he's offering an exchange of white of dark square bishop. And the bishop can't move really because this rook is sort of hanging. Yeah, now sort of. Um, not really damaging. Uh, White's pawn structure, maybe white can find some play on the F file, but white does have a big space advantage here. And a very nice square on D4, where I think you'd like to put a knight at some point. And now just uh clearly is intending to sort of leave his king in the center, or castle and tuck the king on H1 and go for some sort of kingside attack here. Probably pushing forward with E4, F4, E5, uh rooks on the G file. So Yasser attempts to preempt that with Queen to G5 attacking the E pawn, which is defended by the king. Looks kind of dangerous, but then the rook's going to come to the G file with tempo. So yeah, rook comes to the G file with tempo, but he keeps the queen on H6, keeping pressure on the um, the uh, E pawn on E3. So that's interesting. Now he's just going to double rooks, and then see the queen and the rooks will be. Putting a lot of pressure on uh, on the G pawn, but uh, Yasser just calmly plays G6 and doesn't worry about it. So trying to get some more peace trades in, but this is a nice square on what is going on here? Is this an exchange sacrifice? I guess the knight coming into F6 was just too dangerous. Yasser just decided it was too dangerous and couldn't couldn't live with that knight coming into F6. And now looking for a queen trade. So white is actually doing pretty well here. He just has, he's just up the exchange. And it's unclear for what compensation, if any, there is. In fact, I don't think there is any compensation. He's just pushing forward here on the, uh, on the king side. Looks like a nice, I mean, he can, white has just got a huge advantage here. He can even maybe switch his play to the h file. And, uh, what is, where is Yasser's counterplay? He has the, he does have the, um, e5 square for a knight, but, I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Once the other rook comes to the h file, you know, what's he going to do? Just rook to h2 here? I guess the, the king does have f6. So he's going to have to, yeah, go into f6. But yeah, now the rook comes in on the 8th rank, and he can probably try to attack some of these pawns down here. The b pawn, the a pawn, the c pawn, these are all. This is a very tough position for uh, for Yasser here, having to give up the exchange there. That was a really strong attack that the uh, the white player got, and, and Yasser just doesn't seem to have any counterplay, but we'll see if he can drum anything up. So trying to chase the rook off of the 8th rank, and the rook goes willingly off of the 8th rank. That's, that was a blunder. Now giving back the exchange here. Just missing an easy tactic. And now taking the bishop first. So that... Oh! Now taking this pawn. These are nice tactics by Yasser. Now he can take the rook. And so now, suddenly, after that blunder, uh, Yasser has a much better position. In fact, he's just up a pawn in this rook endgame, and the g-pawn is just moving. Just moving down the board. Now the the b-pawn falling. And uh, this game is suddenly winning for black after that blunder. And nice... nice um, Nice, nice of Yasser to catch that tactic, but also not to just immediately play it, playing the bishop takes e4 check first. Uh, okay, so just pushing the pawn, but now rook to g8? No? I thought rook g8 was okay there. Ah, now rook to, now this game is over. Now there's no way to stop the pawn. 
it's just clean. So, um, yeah, White can just resign here. Tw plenty of time, 29 seconds. And, uh, yeah, White resigns. So, that was a really nice, I think, I mean, obviously, Black was much better in this position, and Yasser really was lucky to escape from there, from that game. But, you know, that's part of being a Grandmaster. You know, you don't, you don't always play perfectly, but you gotta take your chances when you get them. So, so missing this, this fork here. And, I'm not sure which was a better move. Maybe just rook to h1. But Yasser's not just uh, not just taking the exchange right away. It was oh, well, he's playing another game, so uh, maybe I can highlight that later on. So Yasser now with the white pieces versus GM Reaper Man. So let's see if he has his name here. Another American grandmaster, or someone at least. His name is Klaus Reberman. Never heard of him, but he's obviously a very strong player. 24-18 rating on the three minute. So, all right, what do we have here? Some kind of a uh, like a Queen's Gambit declined. I was busy talking and missed the opening. So we have some kind of Terash or Queen's Gambit declined with white playing uh, I guess maybe this is an English or some kind of Larson opening. I'm not sure. So black now decides to open up the position and Yasser not taking with the pawn in the center. Just okay with all of these peace trades. Still not taking with the pawn in the center to try to get the central pawn. Maybe going for pressure on the d-pawn with bishop to f3, uh, rook d1, threatening to, to capture this um, this d-pawn. Could be his idea here. Um, so black prepares to meet that, I guess, with bishop to h, bishop to um, b7. Yeah, so he, he did the same. That was clearly his plan to pile up on this d-pawn. And I guess he doesn't want to exchange. Now, he, he can't exchange now because the, the pawn is in a pin, but maybe he could have exchanged earlier. So now, I guess uh, the idea is to stick a rook, this rook here, on d8. And this is a, actually a pretty good square for the queen, controlling a lot of important dark squares, threatening to play e5. Um, e5 could be an idea for uh, black in this position. But then maybe queen g4 or um, queen h4 and attacking the knight. Yeah, now, now maybe threatening to take. No, I guess he's just willing to retake with the queen in this position. The queen on, on b8, by the way, also defending the bishop. So, I don't know, is taking an option here? Uh, I think it is. Could play check, 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 take the bishop, but that's not enough for the queen. To get to a rook and a bishop for the queen, but of course he won't want to do that. Um, Knight f5, attacking the queen, so now the queen just moves to g4, but now, well, I would say maybe, I would, maybe myself tried to play e5, knight f, knight, uh, you know, knight f4, and then play d4 to try to open the position up, but maybe he just feels that this tension in the center is not necessarily bad for him. And it, this knight on a3 is a little bit offsides, you know, it's, there's a little bit of a question about where this knight is going to go. Maybe he could go to c3 into d4. Um, oh, that's a nice move. I like this queen h5 move. It's keeping an eye on the knight, so black can't play a move like uh, g6 to try to chase the queen away because the knight's just hanging. So uh, black's trying to recentralize now, but now yeah, he got he got this tempo in, and um, maybe now he, he got a tempo to relocate his knight. Maybe you can stick it on d4. Maybe d4 is a good square. No, he just wants to leave it on b5. Trying to slow down any potential counterplay, maybe, with uh, b6. But then a6, what happens on a6? And yeah, the pawn on b... The pawn on b3 is a weakness. So how's he going to defend it? Rook to, rook to c3, but then a6. So rook to b1? Nope, he decides not to defend it. Instead goes on the attack, attacking the rook. And I think this should win this pawn, if I'm not mistaken. Knight takes. Knight takes, rook takes, rook, rook takes, rook. Yeah, it works, because the bishop and the, and the queen are defending the pawn. It's enough defense. So, rook takes, rook, rook takes, rook. The knight is defended enough times. So you also winning a pawn here, but then the b3 pawn is a little weak. And this would also add another attacker to the knight, so the knight would probably have to move somewhere. Or he decides just to take it first. So maybe rook takes rook here is good. 
followed by rook takes rook, and then queen takes uh, d5. Yeah. Now defending the b3 pawn. Oh, just okay. Or bishop takes. Yeah, putting pressure on f7. Defending the b3 pawn. You might think about a move like. You might think about a move like bishop c3 or bishop c4, just to prevent any entry of the rook on the seventh rank. Um, that might be an idea to consider and open up the rook on the diagonal. At the moment, he just seems interested in trying to chase the knight away. That's an interesting move. He's weakening his king, but trying to chase the knight away from the defense of the uh, f7 pawn, and now probably lifting the rook to f4. And meanwhile, he has a massive time advantage. Yasser tends to play a little slowly on the three uh, three minute auto pairing, actually. Um, I've seen him lose a lot of games on time, even in better positions, but he's just uh, really working on time right now. So, uh, offering the queen trade, but this, these pawns are going to fall. In fact, uh, there's, there's back rank issues for black as well. So now, um, the, a move like rook to, rook to, um, h, uh, rook to h, uh, a7, attacking the a5 pawn could be a problem. Um, white probably has to, you know, these pawns are falling. It's tough. Just, this knight is just off sides. g5 is a threat, attacking this pawn. So that was a really nice game uh, by Yasser there. Just uh, so I guess what did we start with? It's sort of an English, like a, it almost became like a, a ratey opening. It kind of, I think it did transpose into a ratey, a pure ratey system here. I guess usually in the ratey though the bishop goes on g2. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know. I don't play it that often. But so Black opened up the position a little early, and all right, on we go to the next game. So we have I gave you the business <laughs> playing uh, Yasser here, and we're getting Yasser playing some kind of well I don't know what this was some kind of Philidor defense but without e4 like an old Indian or something and uh, he's uh, taking a page out of Hikaru's book a little bit playing some offbeat openings just trying to outplay his opponent from a uh, from a from a position. So he's choosing Mickey and Keto as bishop, and maybe he has, um, maybe he's arguing that he's got like a good version of the Dutch defense here. Uh, you know, with the pawn on e5. This kind of looks, yeah, it does kind of look a little bit like a Leningrad Dutch. And now, yeah, but now he can play b4 right away. Usually in the Dutch, they play a5 first before knight to a6 to try to get into this, this c5 square after white plays d5. So this kind of, you know, became a little bit of a Dutch game. Um, e4 could be an idea at some point, especially if uh, black, if white ever moves the e pawn, then e4 becomes very strong, blocking out the bishop, um, moving the, chasing this knight, and giving this knight on uh, c6 a potentially very juicy square on e3, on d3, excuse me. So maybe it's best just to chase this knight, and wow, he decides not to chase the knight and give Yasser the chance to play a5. But yeah, I guess he decides that in the future, this is the slow way to sort of go about um, chasing the knight away. He'll play a6 and then b4 to chase the knight away in the future. But in the meantime, it's very important that this pawn stay on e2 to, to cover the e3 square. Right, e3 to cover the e2 to cut e2 to cover the d3 square. So big space advantage for Black, and now of course he has this diagonal open. So it's going to be important. Wow, just allowing the knight to come into e3. That seems crazy. Was that really necessary? Well, now that knight, he'll take he'll take the knight. I would think he's gonna he's decided clearly to take this knight if Yasser doesn't put it on e3. So Yasser decides not not to put the knight on e3, but also not to give the knight up. So he retreats back to a6. Maybe the idea here is to re, re put, reposition the knight onto b4 with, with the tempo on the queen and then open the a file. Nope. So we're going with this knight, probably into e5 and then to, to, uh, to e5 and then to d3. So that's a nice maneuver. And then the bishop is wide open on this diagonal. So if a move like bishop to uh, b2, probably we'll see knight e5. But then, you know, black's bishop is pretty strong. On the other hand, it doesn't have a whole lot of targets to point to. So maybe it's not that strong. It's hard to deter it's hard to say what you know when a bishop like this uh the one on g seven is really strong it, it, it does control the long diagonal, but it is at the same time sort of pointing to the thin air 
and could be easily exchanged. Now, it could become much stronger, of course, if uh, black takes this knight, because if he takes the knight, and then the, the bishop would be controlling the a-file, so he could just pile up on this, this pawn on uh, a2 pretty easily. That would be a pretty easy plan of attack, but now Yasser seems to be going for a different plan of attack involving f4. So white putting his knight in on, on d4, probably a good idea. That's a good square. Uh, a good square for the knight. So f4, is it possible? Is it tactically possible? Well, he's going for the king, the all-out kingside attack. So his break's going to come h4, and then maybe f4. Uh, no, he just wants to open the g file, just to, just argue that he has a massive advantage in space. And now, finally, we see the knight coming into e3. And now it's also protected by this other knight. So this is just a really, I think this is a really nice positional game, and he's way ahead on the clock, is Yasser. A really nice positional game out of what I think we could best call a Leningrad Dutch here. So, uh, wow. Black, white trying to fight back for a little bit of space for his pieces to play some defense, but I don't think it's uh, a long term. Uh, now the rooks are going to come to the G file. Rook to G3. Rook to H, G1. Oh, he's just going to take the knight. So now he takes with the pawn and sacrifices a knight here. Was there a tactic? Uh... Ah, that's a nice tactic, because if pawn takes, bishop takes check, and the knight is falling now. Wow, that's a great tactic. Sacrificing the knight on that square to give, uh, to pick up a couple pawns. So suddenly, with this nice tactic, white may have found some counterplay, but on the other hand, black still seems to have a nice attack on the king, but then black's king is still open as well. Really hard to say what's going on here. Oops, what happened? Did he resign? No, I guess they, I missed the ending of that. Just, I guess black just, white just resigned. Or, or maybe he ran out of time and Yasser went straight to, I wasn't paying attention to the clock. So, we'll do another game here, I guess. Uh, playing an international master, J.M. Cool, whose name in his finger notes is Riff Jean Noël from France. So we have a Banco Gambit here. Uh, sort of like a Banco Gambit, or is this the Blumenfeld Gambit or something? I'm not exactly sure. I think it would be a Blumenfeld gambit if white took there and then he would take with the F pawn or something. Some kind of Benko uh, Benoni gambit uh, combo hybrid there. I'm not exactly sure. So, black stretching out with B5 on the queen side. Uh, sacking a pawn. If I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, that pawn can be taken. Yeah. Rook A2 attacking the bishop. And um, the uh, the B pawn can't be taken because of the pin on the A6 pawn. But he doesn't want also to give him the Banco style counterplay. Maybe he can take it now just because Black wasted a tempo developing the bishop onto A6. No, he just decides to give it back. And uh, White Black chooses to recapture with the knight. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Yasser actually could be down a pawn here in a minute. Maybe he's planning to argue that he can attack the weak a6 pawn or something. Not exactly sure. But now he's officially down a pawn. For what compensation, I'm not entirely sure. The c pawn is uh, the c pawn is is weak, but but white has the uh, black has the bishop pair, so he's going to have to try to drum some stuff up on the. Uh, on the B file, I guess. Now taking back his pawn, so he's no longer down a pawn. Um, now white just, black just giving up his light square bishop. Not interested in maintaining the pay, the advantage of the bishop there, I guess. Uh, can white, I thought maybe Yasser could have played rook b7 there, but instead decides to spend a move just giving his king a little bit of space. Um, we're, in, we're sort of into an opposite color bishop middle game here, which tends to favor the player who's attacking in general, but it seems with both, uh, if both with both uh, players having sort of set up their uh, Fianchetto castle positions with no opposing bishop to take that, that seems unlikely that this game is going to end in any way in some kind of king kingside attack or anything like that. So 
offering a rook exchange here, and black bringing his knight into e5. Um, okay, so with this move, um, perhaps white is looking to play f4 and follow it up with knight c4, but he has to be careful about the e-pawn. With this queen coming here, the e-pawn, if the pawn ever moves to f4, the e-pawn could be in, in bad shape if this knight ever moves away. So I guess <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. Maybe black is going to go for some kind of kingside attack with h4. Uh, but can white get counterplay on the a and b files? Or just now with f4? So he has to be careful of... Oh, now giving up his kingside... You know, so he's just now overprotecting the the e4 pawn. So, but rook rook to rook to e8 seems logical. I don't know if that was really necessary because the knight's a strong defender of the e pawn. But I guess I suppose the argument is it could be attacked by the bishop in exchange, and then the e pawn would fall. So now the rook now he's just really overprotecting the pawn, and uh, now free to move the knight. Hmm. Interesting. This, yeah, this bishop on d4, see, now this is an example where the bishop is a very strong piece, I think, I would argue, because it's controlling a lot of entry squares, like b2 could be an entry square if the knight ever moved. It's eyeing the king. So this is an example where positioned on this square on d4 is very strong here. But white is, uh, the officer is making his move in the center. We're about equal on time. And the pawn can't take uh, now because of the pin on the rook. So, coming in with the knight, offering the bishop for the knight is probably a good thing. I think that bishop is a very strong piece. But yet, like I said before now, that actually loses the queen. <laughs> yep. Because of that b2 square problem. So, that was a bit of a tactical. He forgot that the knight was covering the b2 square. So, trouble for Yasso now. He's going to have to hope that these pawns are strong enough to... And he resigns, actually, because the bishop is now blocking the pawn coverage. And uh, this pawn on, on d7 won't be enough. So yeah, just just makes a blunder. Uh, moves the knight out of the way. A, a good positional idea, probably, but just blundering the queen there. Uh, okay, we'll do one more game. So Yasso now with the black pieces. Yeah, playing, D, playing with d6, e5 stuff a lot today versus Sophos, an international master from Germany. So let's see if he... So black deci white decides just to uh, keep the center, not push with d5, and uh, so understandably black builds up uh, pressure on the d4 point. And yeah, this, I mean, this is really like Nakamura's type stuff that we see a lot from him in his blitz games, just the knight to h6 and the f5. And uh, now white choosing the castle queenside, and Yasser not afraid at all of the opening on the G file. Just um, castling kingside, so we could be in for an exciting game here. This will be the last one I cover for this video, so we'll see. Maybe we'll get into we'll get an exciting finish here. Looking to play B5, of course, opening up some lines, but B5 could possibly be play be met with C with you know with. Okay, so he decides to play d5 in, in response. That's interesting. Now attacking the pawn with the knight, so he's giving giving himself an option of how to capture. He'll definitely try with the knight, I suppose. The idea is to fork the queen and the bishop if this bishop is not no longer defending. That's yeah. That's why we move this knight out of the way so that he can still take the pawn with the with the with the pawn. But if he takes with the knight, the bishop will definitely give itself up because um, I think his argument is the dark square bishop will be a more valuable piece in the long run against the, the king, but, or at least that he'll need the dark square bishop if he's going to have any sort of kingside attacking chances. Um, although the knight on f7 does cover the h6 square, so I would like to play bishop h6 at some point, but it's covered at the moment. So, wow. Yasser voluntarily opening the g-file and sacking a pawn in the process, or was there a tactic? Takes, bishop takes... I'm not sure if there was a tactic one out there. Maybe something... I'm not sure. Something... I guess he would get bishop f5 in, but I'm not sure. I'll have, we'll have to look at that. Um, well, maybe I won't get time to look at that. Oh, sac giving up the f3 pawn. 
with the tempo on the queen seems a little strange. Uh, now knight d4 is probably probably okay. Now the queen attacking the knight. Oh, he just decides to defend it with the bishop. But h. But what about uh, h3 and g4? Oh, check. Okay. Well, he's. Can you play now, knight g? Yeah, knight g attacking the pin knight. And how are you defending the knight again? Usually not a good idea to walk into the walk into a pin. Okay. But shouldn't there be tactics here with 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 f3? Takes takes queen takes. Yeah, bishop takes check. Queen takes. So hey, but then the bishop is hanging. Yeah, I thought there would be tactics here. F3. Now take with the knight, and now take the the knight here. Oh. Oh, okay. That, this also works. But now, yeah, now you can take the. Oh, he's not even interested. He's just going to move the knight in. That's a nice move. But now he can take the two pieces for the rook here. With rook takes f2 check, followed by bishop takes knight, and white just decided to resign. How is he even? Yeah, he's just that was just a nice tactic there. So uh, we'll call this one the last game here. Uh, the line I had in mind with this sequence was, yeah, f3. Oops, what did I do wrong here? I don't know if I can examine the game. Uh, the idea I had here here was to take the knight check and queen takes and then rook takes f2. Uh, but this also this also works attacking the queen and then the knight coming in and uh, yeah I mean I, I don't think the queen can the queen can't defend both the knight and the bishop from any square can she yeah there's no square or, or what about maybe yeah maybe d1 I don't know hard to say d1 might be a possible defense but then probably probably it's good enough just to to take the knight check and then take the bishop with the rook, <laughs> which is also a better way of doing it from my own example from before. Here, uh, yeah, just take uh, just take the knight there, take the knight check, and then take the bishop. Yeah, this seemed to be winning a piece in, in all variations there. So, all right, this was a long video, but uh, we got some good games. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed them, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.